Hello. Hello. Is this one? Hey, welcome to People's Church. We're glad that you're here this morning. I want to thank those of you tuning in online this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us. We're going to get started in just a moment. But uh, how many of you have had an awesome weekend? Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? It's still the weekend. We've got some liquid sunshine out there. And uh, for those of you gardeners, you appreciate that when a little bit of liquid sunshine comes down our way. Hey, we're glad you're here, though. We have a few things coming up in the next few weeks. And it's going to start to get a little bit busy around here, a little bit crazy as if it hasn't been already. Uh, but we do have some child dedications coming up on uh, May 9th. So if you have a child that you know, a family member that you'd like to have dedicated, please contact Stephanie Bennett or Christina Chira here at the church. And we'd love to do that. On Mother's Day, we're going to dedicate some children. That's always a special Sunday, amen? And uh, we also have a uh, special guest coming next week. And we have, actually have a promo video we want to show you before we worship this morning. So check this out. God just allowed us to do something incredible. But when I started out, nobody would have believed that my life would end up like it is. And 24 hours after that, after a high-speed chase and a car wreck, I was arrested and taken to the Irving City Jail, suburb of Dallas. It wasn't long after that that my attorney said, I've asked for a plea bargain for 50 years. I thought I'll be 68 years of age. Tommy put his hand on my shoulder and said, everything's going to be all right. Forty-five minutes later, the Word of God comes alive. It's time for me to get filled. And I will never forget, I gather in the back of the room, they gather around me in a circle. I guess they gather in a circle so you can't escape. And that night, God filled me with the Holy Spirit. Sin. Have 
cast claim on me. I'm alive, I'm alive in you, Jesus. No grave could hold my king. He stands in victory. He's alive, he's alive in me, Jesus. Sing, you're alive. Oh, you're alive, you're alive in me, Jesus. Stands over the grave. So let praise rise high in this place. For our King stands over the grave. Oh, so let praise rise high in this place. For our King stands over. strong is our God is our God is alive he is risen now we are walking in freedom nothing as strong as our Jesus our God is alive oh thank you Jesus our God is alive sing let praise shout of praise this morning. He's worthy. And he's alive today. He reigns in this place.
Jesus is in this room, here right now, here right now, making this place I stand, holy ground, holy
arms fling wide, seek glory as I run inside your throne. Before you, I bow, Jesus. The veil is torn and the doors fling wide, seek glory as I run inside your throne. Before you, I bow. This morning, he's holy. God sing your praise your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever one more time your praise your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be This morning we sang about running into the throne room of God with words of praise, words of adoration. May we never take for granted that at any moment when we cry out to our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ, we enter into the throne room of God. We enter into God's presence. This morning we have a special missions guest with us. And we know that there are many belief systems around the world that believe that you have to go to a temple or you have to go to a special place. You have to travel physically to be closer to a spiritual power. Thank God Jesus tore that down. And he sent the Holy Spirit to literally dwell inside of us. And as a result, we don't have to go to a physical location to be in the presence of God. Now we believe there is value in a community of believers. We're thankful for the community that's here and the community that's watching online. But at any moment, church, 
We have the ear of the creator of the universe because Jesus Christ is our perfect priest. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we have access to our loving heavenly father. Praise God. Psalm 34, verses 15 and 16. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Some of you in here today, you are crying out to the Lord. It's relational. There's been tension in your home. No one else knows, but God has seen what's been spoken in your home. For some, you are crying out to the Lord and it's financial. You need a breakthrough. For some, it's medical. You are crying out to the Lord for healing. Praise God, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are open to your cry. The face of the Lord is against the ones doing evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. Thank God that the eyes of the Lord are on you today and his ears are open to your cry. We serve a God who is a deliverer, the one who delivers us out of our times of trouble. He is close to the one who is brokenhearted. He's close to you today. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, thankful for your closeness. Father, for the one who maybe had come into this place and they feel like you're distant for whatever reason, we know that there's examples of that in the Bible where righteous people, God-loving people felt for whatever reason that you are distant. May they, as we gather to worship, as we pray, as we gather on the word, may they feel your closeness today. Father, they've come to this place as an act of crying out. We know there are many testimonies of those who didn't know what to do, but they knew that there was a church service and they've come in the doors as an act of crying out to you. They've searched the world for answers. They've scoured Google, all other options. Father, perhaps you've brought them here to this place, either in the building or online today. And Father, we believe you have the answer for what they're looking for today through the power of worship, the power of prayer, and the power of your word. Father, we stand ready to hear what you have to say to each of our hearts today, and we're thankful for that. Father, we lift up those in our church family who have needs today. We cry out for those who are needing a healing touch in their body. Father, you know the ones. David, Claire, Darlene, Rod, Buster, Judy, Jerry, Rob, and Mark all hospitalized with different things this morning. Some need a touch on their lungs. Restore breath in their lungs in the name of Jesus Christ. Eradicate any virus or illness from their bodies. Some recovering from massive surgery, Father. We believe we've seen your hand upon their life as you've worked through the doctors. Thank you for doctors and thank you for medicine. Father, for the one the doctor has said there's damage that's irreversible to the brain or to the heart or wherever it may be. Father, we believe that you can work in their lives as you've worked in many more before. We choose to believe the report of the Lord today. We thank you for the healing report that we've received from many, including that of our pastor couple, our senior pastor couple, Scott and Bonnie Erickson. Thank you, Father, for bringing them home this week. As they watch right now online, strengthen them, Father. Thank you for your strengthening work in so many, Lord. And Father, we're ready for what you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Welcome to People's Church. We're so thankful that you're here today. Welcome home, welcome back, welcome for the first time. As you're finding your seat this morning, would you greet somebody by waving at them uh, nearby you saying hello? And we want to greet those who are watching with us on peopleschurch.com, our Facebook page and the YouTube channel. If you'd like to let us know in the comments section where you're watching, who you're watching with this morning, we'd love to greet you, greet each other in those chat areas this morning. Thank you for being part of People's Church today.
If you were to walk into any of the uh, pastoral offices here on the church campus, if you were to go upstairs and walk into any of the pastoral offices, we have bookshelves in there, and those bookshelves are filled uh, with many books on Christianity, study books, commentaries, study Bibles. Uh, how many of you would say that you have more than one Bible in your house? Many of us. How many of you would say that you have a, a study Bible, meaning it has some notes or commentary in it? Praise God. Those of you who raised your hand saying that you have a study Bible, would you say that there are times when the, those study Bibles have helped you to understand what you're looking at? Of course. Well, as we gather here today in America, there are more books and helps and study Bibles written than you and I would have an opportunity to read in a lifetime. But what's so challenging to me this morning is that there are many languages and not just, you know, languages that are smoke, spoken by, by small groups of people. There are major languages in this world where Christians have no material beyond the Bible. They have the Bible, but the pastors who are preparing messages like the one that we're going to hear this morning, people who are teaching Sunday morning groups or Bible studies, they have no helps. And those of you who've prepared a message, those of you who've taught a small group or a Sunday school class, can you imagine trying to prepare uh, without any assistance, without any... Now, of course, God's word is powerful and we're thankful for that. We're also thankful for people who have wisdom to give us insights. Well, People's Church, for decades now, you have been part of something that's amazing, that's been anointed and breathed on by the Holy Spirit. Many years ago, there was a missionary named Don Stamps in South America, and he saw this problem, that there were pastors who had the Bible but no study accompaniments. And so he wrote notes for the Bible and called it the Full Life Study Bible. Shortly after he completed the notes, the man passed away of cancer. And before he went to heaven, it was his prayer that that Bible would be those notes would be translated into a few other languages to help some pastors in some other countries. Started out as the Full Life Study Bible, now known as the Fire Bible. The Fire Bible, he had that, the, God downloaded into his heart that the Fire Bible would be translated into a few languages. Life Publishers has just completed the 63rd translation of the Fire Bible. Equipping pastors, ministry leaders, Bible school teachers, small group leaders, just like you and me, all over the world. This morning, we have a special treat. We have the person who is the leader of Life Publishers. Base is out of office in Springfield, Missouri, but this man travels all over the world, negotiating with those who possess the rights to Bible translations, working on distribution can you imagine trying to navigate how to distribute a Bible in a nation where it's illegal to even have a Bible? That's what he does. He finds front channels and back channels to get Bibles, fire Bibles, to the people who, who need them. Uh, I've had a, a chance to travel with him, and so has our pastor. We know that Pastor Scott and Bonnie Erickson in their 21-plus years here, they have guided a heartbeat of missions that we believe People's Church is, should be difference makers here in Salem, but that we also, because of the prosperity that is, this church has been blessed with, that we have a responsibility to be part of taking the word of God to the nations, reaching the lost, planting churches where there are no churches, training the next generation of leaders, and serving those who are suffering with compassion. So this invitation was uh, done by... Pastor Erickson, two years ago, and the day's here. Would you please give your very best People's Church welcome to Jeff Dove, director of Life Publishers. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Tom. And thank you, People's Church. It's good to see you all again. Some of you haven't changed a bit, and others of you look like you're 100 years old. <laughs> But praise God, it's good to be above ground and vertical, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you know, this whole COVID thing has just really rung our bell. Uh, my mom passed away last year from complications and is now in the presence of he who is altogether lovely and wonderful. 
The last word she said to me was, please let me go and just quit fighting over my body. <laughs> I want to go be with Jesus. How many of you know that's an old person prayer? Yeah. <laughs> just let me go. <laughs> So if she'd had the strength, she'd have slapped me. So because I was telling her, Mom, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. She says, I'm ready to go. She went home. My poor dad got it, and, and uh, he's been laid out for several months with the whole thing. But he's a great man of God, filled with the Spirit, of course, and my, my personal best mentor in the faith. But Pastor Scott and Miss Bonnie, as I call her, um, have been encouraging me in this journey with my own father. And I didn't mention this in the first service. If you don't like this service, come back to the next one. It won't be anything like the first one either. But um, they just encouraged me in a, in a specific way to believe with my dad and uh, to come alongside my dad because he had quit. You know, they've been married 60-plus years, and, and they had quit. And dad just wanted to go to heaven. So Pastor Scott reached out across the 2,500 miles to the city of Dayton, Ohio, and, and spoke a word of faith and anointing into that man's life. And I got text, and I hope pastor's watching online right now. I know he was the first service, but my dad got up out of bed for the first time in nearly four months. This last week, he's sitting up, he's eating, he's talking about fishing. Can you say amen? <laughs> and it's because of people's church and their leadership speaking life into places where it could be death. And I just, I believe this church has a part of my heart and my life. I want to greet you on behalf of my dear wife, Michelle, who, who for no fault of her own has been drugged all over the planet for 30 some years in missions. She didn't sign up for it. And frankly, neither did I. But um, we, we got called and on a Monday morning. Did you know that people, God speaks to people on Monday mornings? Called us on a Monday morning, laid his big hand on her shoulder and said, thanks for the money. Thanks for the sermons. Thanks for the church growth. But I want your life. I want you to go. I went home and told my wife, I said, I think we're called. She said, I think you're crazy. Something. Think what, you're, what you'd do if your husband came home and said, we're going to go to Southeast Asia. <laughs> you're going by yourself, Bubba. <laughs> no, she didn't say that. My wife is a godly woman. She probably said it in tongues and still meant it. But <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Scott and Bonnie have been with us nearly for that entire journey. We love them. We bless them in the name of Jesus. And I'm missing them here this morning, but I'm so glad that they're recovered and home from the hospital and making progress. Thanks also to Pastor Tom and Jennifer. We love this young couple where it's almost like we've taken them on to adopt as another part of our family. They're about the same age as our kids. It's terrible when senior pastors are the same age as your own kids. Amen? <clears throat> so um, I wasn't introduced as a great man of God last night. I was introduced, hey, this is Uncle Jeff <laughs> and uh, to, to his family. But I've traveled with around the world with this young man, and I've seen his heart long before he came here. You got a treasure. You have a jewel in, in the next leadership that's coming to this church, yes. Both in his former capacity and his, in his video technology, his heart for missions, Pastor Tom and, and as well Pastor Scott and Miss Bonnie have traveled with us around the world. They know my heart for this fire Bible, this tool that has 77 articles on faith and conduct specifically targeted for leaders, but anyone who wants to grow in the body of Christ. It's got commentary on the bottom of every single page to help unpack the difficult portions of scripture, to help give you some cultural understanding. It has book introductions at the beginning of every book, all 66, to tell you how that was written, why it was written, who we think wrote it, and what the ending purpose of that is. It has outlines for sermons, for Sunday school classes. It's a huge, huge help in the body of Christ, specifically for those in leadership. Many of our target audience locations have no Bible school. They have no training. They have nothing to offer to grow in faith and in conduct except for the fire Bible that we have together put into their heart languages. Thank God for the three million Chinese fire Bibles that went across the border. <laughs> Our God says when the door is closed, the door will stay closed. When the door needs to be open, he'll open that door. Can you, can you thank God we serve an open door God? He helped us to get these in there. It's making an impact for millions of Chinese believers today. I know they're, they're, we're, we're talking bad about them in the press. We're talking bad about uh, the Chinese people group on, on, on television. How many of you know government and peoples are two different things? 
Completely different things. God loves the Chinese people. He loved them enough that you helped us fund the Chinese Fire Bible. Millions of these have gone in and been distributed around the country. Uh, I think of this one here that's so precious to my heart. This is the New Testament Fire Bible in North Korean. It's a different language than South Korean. It's not possible. There's no church there. There's no, there's no underpinnings of a church structure. There's no church planning movement. We have no resident missionaries in country. But how many of you know the Bible says he's going to pour out his spirit on how much flesh? Flesh, on all flesh. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached where? Into all nations, even into the hermit kingdom. And 10,000 of these have found their way across the border and are under beds and in the floor and in the walls and, and have been ripped apart and shared apart with many peoples because of what you do because of our partnership for Fire Bible. I'm trying to look as many of you as I can in the eye and say thank you. I know some of you are, are rich in, in worldly goods and you've given generously and I bless you for that in Jesus' name. Some of you don't have a lot of earthly treasure and you've sacrificed to make this possible and I bless you for that in Jesus' name. Both those gifts out of context come as faithfulness to the Father. And they, and they come before him, as, as the Bible says, as the smoke of the sacrifice of sins. And it's beautiful in his sight what we're doing together. Speaking of smoke, as Pastor was talking here earlier, giving a great introduction to the Fire Bible, he, he mistakenly, he said he wanted to say spoken languages, but he said smoking languages. Did you hear him say that? No forgiveness, Pastor, no forgiveness. <laughs> Smoke in languages, that, that reminded me, this is a true story. If it's a missionary, you have to say, this is a true story. And me and a, a friend of mine were sitting in an office in, in uh, Belgrade, uh, Serbia. And we're sitting there with a, fire, with a Bible society director who is not a Pentecostal believer. So she's very sedate and calm. And she's, she's uh, not kind of wild like I am. And she's sitting there and she brought a Baptist pastor in to assess the fire Bible in English to find out if we needed a Pentecostal study Bible in the nation of Serbia. So she brings in a non-Pentecostal to help us to, to, to assess this thing. And he's opening it up, much like Pastor said. He's looking at it and he's looking at the articles and he's looking at the commentary. And he said, oh... This would be great. This would be great. This would be, this would be awesome. He said, we might avoid some of the circumstances that happened to me recently. I said, well, sir, what happened to you recently? He said, well, my neighbor had just moved in from out, out of province, and, and he wasn't a believer. And I thought, the best thing I can do is give him a Bible. He looked at it, and he says, what is this book? And he says, well, it's the holy word of God. Which God? Well, God Almighty, the Father of Jesus Christ and, and the Holy Spirit and the Trinity. He says, I never heard any such nonsense. How can, you, how can you know it's true? And all of the secular type things that they ask. He says, just read the book. Just read the book. He said, well, okay, but I've never heard any of this religious stuff before. I know that's a little flippant to some of us here. We like to use more spiritual terminology, but that's the way the world talks. They don't know what we know. They don't speak like we speak. So he went home and he began to look at it. And you know what our greatest competitor for Bible paper is? Cigarettes. Worldwide, they make cigarettes out of basically the same kind of paper that we make Bibles out of. And so this man thought, wow, this is awesome. I don't have to buy any paper. I'll read a page and smoke a page. I'll read a page and smoke a page. And this Baptist pastor, I could have swore he's a closet Pentecostal. This Baptist pastor said he smoked his way through Matthew, smoked his way through Luke and Mark, and, and he smoked his way to the third chapter of John when he read the story of Nicodemus and how we must be born again. He said he smoked his way to the third chapter of John and came to me and says, I must give my heart to this Jesus called Christ. <laughs> How many of you know that smoking or reading God's word is going to be effective and powerful in your life? I've got so many more examples to, to share of how, how just a regular Bible or a fire Bible has made an impact on people around the world. I want you to know our partnership has helped us with the 60 languages, but then as well, our most recent ones that have taken us so long, the, the Hmong tribal edition. How many of you have a, a Hmong friend? Anyone here? Yeah, Hmong friends. Their, their story is too long to tell here this morning. The most challenged immigratory group in our nation's history. 
The suicide rate is double, sometimes triple what it is of other groups in the country. They, they could have asked us for anything. They could have asked for help with their Bible school training. They could have asked us for help with their churches here in the States. They could have asked us for anything. But overseas in Vietnam and Laos and northern Thailand, southern China, and all across Minneapolis, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Fresno, California, Modesto, and down into North Carolina, all of the Hmong leaders that I met with said, get us a Bible in our own language. Get us one that we can understand and we'll reach the people for Christ. That Hmong Fire Bible is finished today because of our partnership. Can you say amen? We're going to put that into their hands, God willing, in October of this year. I've invited Pastor to come and be with us. He's traveled the world with us many times before. We hope he can do it again to, to dedicate the Hmong tribal edition of the Fire Bible. The Karen will also be translated or will also be finished and dedicated that week. And as well, one that's been close to my heart recently, the Hungarian language Fire Bible is now finished. It's printed and God helping us in September of this year, we'll go to Budapest and then as well over into Romania where there's many, many Hungarian speaking people. And we're going to put a Fire Bible into the hands of those people. It's incredible, isn't it, what God's able to do when his people are generous, his people are focused on mission and purpose, and we work together to get it done. Today is a Fire Bible Sunday. Today is a day we celebrate what we've accomplished, but also what is yet to be done. I thank God for all that we've accomplished together. I thank God that from our 300-person startup in 1914, we now have nearly 70 million believers worldwide within the Assemblies of God. Can you say amen for that? It's pretty good growth. 300 to 70 million plus, not counting kids and, and, and other ones. Worldwide leaders, over 550 million people are now classed as evangelical Christ followers, not just religious people, not just bodies in the church service, but people who are actual followers of the Lord Jesus Christ in whatever denomination you find yourself in or, or construct for a follower of Christ. But yet even if we say well over one half of a billion have been reached, and we weigh that against 7.8 billion that now call this planet home, it means that we still have over 90%, nearly 93% of our planet is still not reached, still not in, still not converted, still not understanding the claims of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to stand up here and say how great we've done and how wonderful it's been and how, how enormous our partnership has been together. But as my old mentor in the faith, Brother Lauren Triplett, says it this way, he said, let us not measure our efforts by what we have done and what has been done, but let us measure our efforts against that which is still to be reached. There's so much more yet to be done, and this fire Bible is a tool in the hands of our missionaries. It's a tool in the hands of our national leaders. It's a tool in places where they have no body able to go in, as I mentioned, North Korea, uh, into, into Iran, in the language of Farsi, and what we used to call Persian, but it's Farsi speakers. Uh, today, I don't know if you realize this because you don't hear this on CNN. You don't hear this on Fox News or on MSNBC or whatever is your favorite source of news is, but you know the greatest church growth movement on the planet today without exception, is in the nation of Iran. Can you say amen? In the devil's backyard, the Spirit of God is being poured out across that nation. Now, I, I can say that because I don't go there. I, I, I'm not planning a vacation or a cruise to Iran anytime soon. If God told me to go, I'd, I'd pray again, make sure I heard the right voice. But if God told me to go, I'd go. But there are some places you just stay clear of unless the Lord speaks to you. This is one of them. But as soon as we got the invitation, we translated the Bible into Farsi. It's huge. It's like three times this size. And now we're putting it in chips. We're putting it in other, other resource abilities so they can use it. But God is not chained by whether or not we have personnel there. He said he's going to pour out of his spirit upon all flesh, all people. There are prayers going up all around the world to hear the message in a cultural context that they can understand. One of those is a missionary from, named Dan Blair from the country of Slovenia. Um, he says, greetings, Jeff. This is a recent correspondence with me. He said, thanks so much for reaching out. We are so excited for the prospect of a fire Bible coming to Slovenia in our language. Slovenia has very few Bibles, but none that are geared toward Pentecostals or even evangelicals. I truly believe this will be such a valuable resource for the pastors and believers alike. We have no Bible schools in this country. 
You hear that? We have so much here. When I read statements like that, it's easy to just gloss right over it and, and forget about it. No Bible schools in Slovenian language for the people of that country. I truly believe this will be a valuable resource. We have no Bible schools, and this will be such a great tool for our movement to be able to better train and equip the lay leaders. Having a study Bible made specifically for the Pentecostal believer can honestly be a game changer here. He didn't know it, but I had a whole program called the Game Changers, <laughs> and it just blessed my heart when he used that terminology. Uh, the Fire Bible has been on my heart from the very moment we accepted our call to come to Slovenia. My first thought was Fire Bible. We're so thankful that we are getting the Fire Bible started. Can you say amen? We're going to have a Fire Bible in the Slovenian language. If the Lord tarries his return in the next two and a half years, we'll be, we'll be in, in Slovenia. We're going to put that into, the, into their hands, and God's going to bless that church because of our great partnership here today. Go with me back in my missionary career, back to 1993. We were called to the nation of Laos, and we landed in a little northern city. It was the birthplace of communism, actually, in that country, and uh, in a place called Mung Pong Sawan Kwang Siang Kwang Nai Patet Lao. You say that three times, and you'll get filled with the Holy Ghost if you've been struggling <laughs> to receive that gift from the heaven. Mung Pong Sawan Yunai Kwang Siang Kwang Patet Lao. That's the city of Ponsawan, the city of heaven. <laughs> I didn't feel heaven when I was there, I can tell you that. Quang Xiong Quang, the province of Xiong Quang in, in the nation of Laos, Patet Lao. And we had been there trying to learn, trying to understand this language and get a handle on it. It is a six-tone language. You can say the same word spelled correctly, spoken correctly, but if your tone is wrong, it's a totally different word. I can barely speak English, and here God has a sense of humor, called me into this situation to speak this ding tong tong language, and I just, uh, it was going to be impossible, but I was sent, so I went, and, and uh, at the end of our fifth, first 15 months, we were able to, by, by use of our rudimentary Lao and by finding bits and pieces and little conversations, I can't, I can't tell the entire story today, uh, but I, 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 we were able to win this young lady to Christ. And a single young lady, my, she was basically our teacher for Michelle and I. And uh, I'll never forget her words. When we were kicked out of the country, we got the left foot of fellowship. Anyone ever experienced that before? It's a tough, tough feeling. I remember when I went home and told my kids, because my kids were normal. Can you say normal? <laughs> my kids were normal. When I told them they had to leave grandma, they had to leave grandpa, both sides of the family. They had to leave home. They had to leave football. They had to leave baseball. They had to leave Snickers and McDonald's and, and all of the stuff that we count as normal and the right of every citizen of the United States. They had to leave all of that and go to the other part of the world they cried. My wife cried. I went behind closed doors and I cried. <laughs> I just thought to myself, I wonder if they have fried chicken there. Because <laughs> we all know that fried chicken and preachers are just like that. We're just close. <laughs> they cried, but 15 months after being in the country, they came and gave us the left foot. And uh, we were kicked out of the country for being a little too Christian for their, the government's belief system. And uh, I watched as my wife, who had not really wanted to go, but she went in obedience, I watched her cry because she wasn't leaving the mission field. She was leaving her families, her friends, the little kids that she's an RN by trade and training, but she's leaving the kids behind, leaving the schools behind. We had planted nine uh, at that time. We were going on our 10th school. Hundreds and hundreds of little kids would come, and, and, and we were leaving all that behind. My kids were crying because they were leaving their friends. It was no longer a field. It was real people. It was a real outreach to them. And they, they were leaving there, and this young lady, I won't call her name because we're, I think we're still on the Internet, but she came to me, and she says, Tan Dub is what she called me. She couldn't say Dub. It's, they don't have that V-E in their language, so it's Tan Dub. I always wanted to be called Dub. And uh, she said, Tan Dub, if you will get me the instructions, get me the manual, get me that which I must do to teach me what I must do, get it to me in my own language, and I will pray, and I will visit, and I will tell this story, and I will pray for the sick, and I'll bring our groups together secretly so we can be safe. I'll do all that. I can't be a pastor like you are, but I'll do everything that I just mentioned. How many of you know, by any other name, a rose is still a rose. 
some years down the road, I had the privilege of standing in Chiang Rai, Thailand, and putting that Lao Full Life Study Bible, the Fire Bible in Lao, into that dear lady's hands. She's now the associate pastor of First Assembly of God in the city where she now resides. By the power of God, now she has the instructions. She has everything she needs for faith and conduct to build the church in that country because of our partnership. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. This morning... We have an opportunity to help build Bibles in Armenian, in Gujarat, in Polish, in Slovenian, in Pidgin English called Takpisin, Haitian Creole, Singhalese, Tedum Dili for East Timor, many other languages that we're currently working on along with those that have requested us to come in and help them. Our partnership of offerings, both special meetings like this, but then also your monthly missionary giving through this local church. We don't encourage anyone to give directly to us. Always go through your local assembly. It's the best way to do it. But you've helped us build so many in the past, but there's still so much that's yet to be done. God help us. You say, Jeff, why don't we just send them our Bibles? How many of you have more than one Bible at your house? Look around, guys. How many of you have more than five Count your iPhone, count your iPad, count your, your iPod if you're still that ancient technology. Um, count your Alexander Scorby's audio Bible. Count all those and you start adding them up. I think my last count I was over 40-some Bibles that I personally own. And that doesn't count the multiple copies of different ones that we've gotten from different sources through the years. But I've heard the comment so many times through the years, let's just bring all of ours in and we'll send ours out. How many of you know if it's not in your heart language, if it's not in a language you easily understand, it, does, it still doesn't make any sense? It might be a holy book. It might be the word of God. It might as well be smoking paper if you don't understand it. Let me unpack that for you, if, if I may, this morning. Um, try my, some of my language I learned when I was over there. Let me tell you a story. Stop me if you've heard this story, okay? Sanan Kalsang Prabut Pajal Ben Payesu Krit Loma Yunamapara Sam Lap Sam Sip Sam Gapi Lang Jak Nan Latabanti Maikoidi Loi Ka Payesu Krit Dit Tua Yuti Maigan Ken Lang Jak Nan San Sabok Ok Sop Yunai Maigan Ken Plok Yuti Din Dewa Pawa Amna Jak Prajal Yunai Nai Tua Payesu Krit Kal Rapchi with my Jak Tidin Logo Kap by Sawan Diani Dit my, you're a dead bunch. Say, Jeff, don't insult us. <laughs> if, if you're insulted by that, you, you need to get a life. You say, Jeff, I, I, I don't understand it. Were you speaking in tongues? Were you just flipping stuff out there? What, what was going on? God the Father from heaven saw our condition that each and every one of us was full of sin and could not rescue ourselves. Therefore, he sent his only begotten son, to use the old King James language, his only begotten son, that whomsoever should believeth, and you know the rest of the scripture, he sent his only son who walked among us for 33 plus years until an ungodly government killed him by nailing his body to a crisscross beam. His disciples came and took his body down and put it in the ground. But because the power, the anointed power and spirit of God resided in him, he took his own life back again and went back to the father where he's not sitting there playing patty cake. He says he ever lives to intercede for us. Because that which we do this morning is important to the heart of God. Amen. It sounds a little different when you understand the dialect. I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of millions of people have never heard that simple language in their own tongue for the first time and had it unpacked and explained. There is still so much work to do. As Brother Triplett said, we cannot measure it by the 60 that we have done. We must measure it by the millions who still need. We cannot measure it by the tens of millions that are already in the church. We must measure it by the harvest that's still in the field. We must measure it with the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ as he stood over the city of Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have pulled you to myself as a, as a mother hen does her chicks. That's the heart of the God I serve. 
Isaiah chapter 6, you, you come into the presence of God with the prophet Isaiah. He said the Lord came down and the smoke filled the temple. And he could have said anything. He could have said, I'm here for healing. I'm here for church growth. I'm here for a good rocking kids church. He could have said anything. But he didn't. As God begins to talk to himself, what does he talk about? The harvest. Who's going to tell? Who's going to share? Who will we send to go to these people and reach them before it's too late? And Isaiah said, oh God, I've got sinful lips and I'm from a sinful tribe. But Lord, if it's possible, send me. Send me. And I think this morning, if I can leave you with anything, it's the heart of God is still the same. He changes not. If you get into God's presence and you get past your needs, you get past your hurts, you get past your offenses, you get past all of your history, you come into the presence of God and you lay your heart out there, the thing that you'll hear is, who will go and touch my people? Who will tell them before it's too late? Who will share with them I've paid the price for them to be one and for them to be saved? Who will do it? Who will do it? Not everyone is called. Not everyone is sent, but everyone is responsible to make sure this message gets out. Everyone has the privilege of being a part of it. Well, none of that was in my notes. I'm still in the introduction. God help us. I love my job. <laughs> it's not a pill to be a missionary. I hope if you get nothing else from this service this morning, you get that, that not all missionaries are just going to get up here and put you on a guilt trip about how pitiful it is and how terrible you are because we had to go and you, you got to stay. And I tell you what, what a privilege. <laughs> what a privilege to be your sent one, to be the one that you sent out to do this great work of God and to be a part of this great fire Bible ministry. You're doing your part. Now, if God asks you to go, don't insult him with an offering. Don't just say, I promise I'll pray harder and I'll pray more. Do whatever he asks you to do. But if he lays on your heart to give something generous today to reach those people who have not yet been touched, I encourage you to dig deep. Do what you can. Do what you're asked to do. And God will help you find a way to make that possible. We've got a video we're going to end with here now that basically unpacks with faces from the field a little side note here to make, your, make you proud. Most of the video you're seeing was shot by Pastor Tom on some of our trips together, put together by our videographer as well. But Pastor Tom was responsible for most of this. And it just, it'll help you see these are real people in real places looking forward to a fire Bible in their language. Father God, bless your people as Pastor Tom leads them in a great time of commitment this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity and for allowing us to be partners together with you. Help us to step out of the boat. Along with the Apostle Peter, Lord, step out of the boat in impossibility to go even beyond what we think we can do to walk into that which will take a miracle to take place. Help us this morning, Lord, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Roll that video, guys. Thank you.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jeff. Can we thank Jeff Dove for coming to be with us this morning? I'm looking forward to it for a long time and sure are thankful for your trip today. I know Pastor and Bonnie sure wish that they could be here. Church, we're thankful to have a senior pastor, senior pastor couple, Pastor Scott and Bonnie Erickson, who have a heart to be global difference makers. Now, some of us uh, are, are creatures of habit. We like order, and perhaps you were anxious because we didn't take the offering or receive the offering earlier in the service. Fear not. I'm going to ask you to take out the uh, device that you would typically uh, bring your offering in. For some of us, it's a check or a cash on your uh, rows today, there's envelopes. And if you'd like to do something special for Fire Bible, and just one of the blank lines here, go ahead and write fire or fire Bible. Fire, if you just put the word fire there, we'll know what it means. Uh, for those of you who are like Jennifer and I and like to do it by your device, I invite you to take out your device, open up the People's Church app, or go to peopleschurch.com slash give today. And uh, we've actually created a special drop down uh, for Fire Bible that you can find in your app today. Jeff, I want to thank you publicly for inviting me to bring my camera around the world with you and help to capture some things. And uh, just, if I may, that uh, picture on the right of the guy flexing his muscle, I took that picture in Ludhiana, India. I met that guy in the market. And the lady that's holding the Bible on the left there, she's a small group leader in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. I met her as she was leading a Bible study in a hut in Mongolia, literally a hut in Mongolia called a yurt, right? That's what they call it, a yurt. Amazing. So the Fire Bible is making a difference. In church, we have an opportunity to be part of what Fire Bible is doing all over the world today. One that I don't have a picture of with uh, us today is a, a Bible school, Bible college professor in Hungary. I was in Hungary probably two years ago with, with Jeff, and I met this uh, college professor, and I brought an English Fire Bible. And I said, would you look at this for me? He spoke English fluently, but his heart language, his first language was Hungarian. And I said, will you take a look at this English Fire Bible and let me know if you had this, would it make it be a difference maker for you? And he began to go through the pages and he's just shaking his head saying, this is amazing. And he said, in fact, we just finished a project with some of our pastoral students. And I know it would have been so much more impactful if we had this for those students. Well, in a few months, the printing's gonna be done and they are gonna have it. So his prayer will be answered. And if you have been part of missions giving through People's Church, you are part of every one of those translations. So as we begin to uh, pray today, and worship team, you can begin. Oh, just Brent. Hi, Brent. More than enough. <laughs> as Brent begins to play, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask you to pray for a moment as you're holding your phone or the envelope or whatever it may be. Uh, I know many weren't expecting to do this today, but maybe God has laid something special on your heart. When we talk about the production of the Fire Bible, not just the cost of the actual pages, but when it comes to the expert translation, I mean, they go through this with expert level translation. So there's no spelling errors or anything like that. Uh, grammatical errors, expert level translation, printing, distribution. They've calculated that it costs about $75 per Bible to, when you calculate it over the cost of all the, the translation work, about $75 per Bible. So I wonder how many Bibles you be, might be willing to do today. Someone here, you'd say, I could do half of one. I could do half of one. God bless you. Some of you might be able to say, I could take on one. When we think of the cost of a translation, I could cover the cost of essentially one, one Bible, $75. And there may be some in this room that God's laid something on your heart to do above and beyond that. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for your generosity, however that may be represented today. Jeff, as you were sharing, I was thinking around this room, and I know as I think of believers in this room, we can go back to when someone told us about Jesus Christ. Maybe it was preached from a platform, this platform or another platform by a pastor, Maybe it was in a coffee shop one-on-one, -on -one. it was in a living room, but someone told us about Jesus and someone explained to us the cross in a way that made sense. That's what we want. We want people around the world to be able to explain Jesus in a way that makes sense. And if we can provide them with this help, that's what we are all about. 
So let me ask you as you hold that uh, offering in your hand today, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for your word. We're thankful that the word is accessible, that you actually want all of your believers to be engaged in the word. While some religious traditions, they may teach that you have to be special, you have to be the priest or the imam to read the word, and it's not for everybody. Thank you, Father, that you have designed your word to be read by each one of your precious people. And Father, we know the power of the word as we've read it. It is alive and active, sharper than any, any two-edged sword. Thank you for the powerful word of God. And thank you, Father, for the pastors around the world who are standing up saying, I will be your messenger even in this hard country, even in a country where the government may be opposed to the Christian faith. Thank you for the pastors and the Sunday school teachers and the small group leaders who have said, I will teach your word to your people, to those who are lost and crying out. Father, as we sit here in this place today, many of us would recognize that we are in a place of prosperity when compared to many situations around the world. And we know that with that, there is privilege and also responsibility. And thank you for inviting us, Father, as part of that responsibility to be those who equip others with your precious word. And Father, as the team at Life Publishers works through each of these translations, first 30, then 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 60 plus Bibles now as they desire to have the Fire Bible translated into the 100 leading languages of the world. Thank you for bringing people's church along that journey. As we bring our tithes, our offerings today, thank you for what you've laid on hearts to go above and beyond to do something special for Fire Bible today. Thank you, Lord. live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm away Lord have your way in me I invite you to stand if you're able Lord, this morning I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you that I take every moment I'm away Lord have your way in me Father thank you for how you've spoken to hearts today this may be just one person who's here or someone who's watching online maybe there's someone who's uh, been listening to all this and through the power of the Spirit, you've spoken to their hearts. And they had uh, some money that they've set aside and they had planned to use it for something else. And again, maybe this is just one person. Today you've spoken to their heart and you've clearly said, that can wait, whatever that is. And God has laid on your heart to do something sacrificial for Fire Bible today. I want you to know if, that's, if you're the person who that's for, God sees that and he will honor that what has been laid on your heart. Father, thank you for using this church to be part of Fire Bible. Thank you for the powerful nature of your word. Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts through the preaching of your word today and thank you for this time to worship you with our giving today. Father, bless each one as you, they go from this place. Cover them, guide them, protect them. May they sense you with them in a real and tangible way as they face what they have upcoming today and throughout the week. You are provider, you are healer, you are protector, you are a good God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, as you go from this place, there will be ushers at each door who would receive your offering if you're going to do it uh, using one of these envelopes. And if you've been praying, holding your phone in your hand today, go ahead and press send and we will get that money off to Jeff. God bless you. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tonight at 6 o'clock.